Okay, you're going to complain about this next one because the next diagram is going to look incredibly crazy. If you thought the previous thing, glycolysis and the link reaction were a little bit ugly looking, this is about to get even uglier. But let me do a quick review. Just look at this diagram here. You can see what's happened so far. We're talking about cellular respiration, which is the process of using glucose, uh, converting that into energy. So glucose in the presence of oxygen will be converted to carbon dioxide and water. You should be reciting that over and over again. And then you get some ATP as well, which is the energy. So here's the cytoplasm out here. And glycolysis, the splitting of glucose into two pyruvate molecules, all happens out here. That's all anaerobic respiration. Now, if there's oxygen present, and we're going to see that at the very, very end, it's kind of a surprise, the pyruvate will move into the mitochondria, so finally into the mitochondria, into this matrix area here. This is a matrix where all the dots are. And the link reaction is going to happen, and that's going to break pyruvate down into acetyl coenzyme A, which is our link into the Krebs cycle. Most of the good stuff is going to happen in the Krebs cycle, we're going to see. So using my circus analogy, as the result of glycolysis, I got a little ticket um, to put in my pocket to keep for later. It was a ticket. Um, NADH was, the, was what I got. In the link reaction, I also got some NADH as well too, but now the acetyl coenzyme A is moving into the Krebs cycle. So don't panic when you see this. Remember, think big picture. All right, what's the big picture here? I've just added a lot of extra detail for if you want to get all the detail down, but let's think big picture. So what did I get at the end of the uh, at the end of the link reaction? I got acetyl coenzyme A, and that should have two carbons in it, two carbons, because my three carbon compound pyruvate got converted into this. So let's do a little bit of math here. I'm gonna take something with two. And I'm going to add it to something that has four carbons. It's called oxaloacetate. You don't have to know that. But two carbons plus four carbons makes a six carbon compound. Here it is, citrate, six carbon compound. And if this is a cycle, I have to convert this six carbon compound back into something that has four carbons. So uh, at some point, this has got to lose a carbon, doesn't it? So if it loses a, carpound, uh, a carbon, carbon, what the? Loses a carbon, then the C6 was going to turn into a C5. That's a five carbon molecule. We don't even have to know the names of it. Forget about all that. Big picture. And if this five carbon compound needs to regenerate into a four carbon compound, well, it's got to lose a carbon somewhere. So there's actually an extra step. So look at the math. Two plus four makes six. Six minus a carbon makes five. Six minus another carbon makes four. How do we easily lose a carbon? Well, in respiration, what are we getting rid of? Carbon dioxide. So check it out. If we lose a carbon dioxide molecule right there, that makes sense. Then we go to C5. If I go from a C5 to a C4, what can I do? I can lose another carbon dioxide molecule. I bet you know the name of that type of reaction, right? Check out some of the red words at the bottom. So um, that's it. That's pretty much what happens, the entire thing. So what's all this other stuff? Well, we've seen it all before. So it turns out that this Krebs cycle, if I'm talking about a circus analogy, and the Krebs cycle is your main attraction. This is where all the games are. Because by going down through this entire thing, you end up getting tickets galore. Take a look right here. Over here, I get another ticket, an NADH molecule. And you've seen this before. So NADH gets reduced to this, which means this guy got oxidized. Um, what happens over here? Oh, look. Again, another ticket. This is definitely the main event. Exact same thing is happening. What's happening over here? Oh, look, another ticket I'm getting. It's so exciting. All this reduction is happening, which is the same thing as the oxidation of something else. Look at that. I got one. I got two. I got three tickets. Could things get any better? Yes, it can. Because you're just like walking around and uh, some weird old guy says, hey, hey, you want a ticket? You want a ticket and you can't help yourself and you're like, yes, yes, I need a ticket. But he pulls a ticket out of his pocket, but turns out it's ripped. It's like a broken ticket. And that broken ticket is called FADH2. Kind of looks similar to this, but it's kind of broken. Uh, but you'll take it. You'll take it. He doesn't ask for anything in return. So you take it and you run. So you get all this and look at all this. So I've got a bunch of tickets. I got a broken ticket. And... It's almost like they're trying to tease you. They want you to stay because your tickets don't mean anything unless you actually go exchange them. And so some lady with crazy hair comes up to you and says, Hey, little boy, look at what you can get with all these tickets and actually hands you some energy directly. Just gives you a free ATP molecule, like a, like a sample, because you know 
Well, you don't right now, but the, that lady is trying to tell you that you like this, you like this ATP. If you like that, then take all your tickets and you're actually going to be exchanging each of these tickets for more ATP. And this should make sense with the broken ticket because it turns out, and I haven't told you so far, but each one of these NADH molecules can actually be exchanged for not one, not two, but three ATP molecules. Have you been keeping track? You collected a whole bunch from glycolysis and the link reaction, and now you're getting extras here. There's one, there's another, there's another. Remember, each one of these gives you three ATPs. Well, why is this one broken? Because when you take this one to exchange, the FADH2, you only get two ATP molecules. I'm not making this stuff up. And then you got a free one from the lady with crazy hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of this, now all we got to do, uh, what's the two? Oh yeah, there we go. I said four plus two. So acetylcoenzyme A has, is a two carbon compound and it just gets oops, converted back into the coenzyme A. Look at that. That's the majority of the stuff there. Just the math and then all these bonus things. So in red here, I just have names of some of these things. So obviously when you lose a carbon, it's called decarboxylation. So we'll call that decarboxylation. I uh, lose another carbon over here from 5 to 4, so we'll call that a decarboxylation. This is another oxidation reaction over here. It's oxidation of citrate, though, of citrate. And here's another oxidation reaction, but that's oxidation of this C5 molecule. Uh, here's another oxidation reaction of happening here, and that's happening to the C4 molecule. So what's getting reduced? Remember the NAD plus ah, is getting reduced to NADH. Another oxidation reaction here, the FADH is getting reduced to FADH2, but we're actually oxidizing the C4 guy again. And we need a fancy name for free ATP molecule from the crazy lady with pink hair, and that's actually called substrate level phosphorylation. So it's happening at this particular stage and we don't require the ticket exchange counter and so this is called substrate level phosphorylation where you just get a little bit of ATP right here so look at that that's the whole thing I'm gonna delete this I don't know what that is but that is the Krebs cycle it also happens in the matrix of the mitochondria where Keanu Reeves lives and look at this what's happening right here overall this is what I got from one turn of the Krebs cycle I got three NADHs one two three I got one FADH2 from the old man out of his pocket, shady old man. And I got one free ATP molecule. That happens per turn. But do, do you remember that the original glucose molecule back in glycolysis got split into two pyruvates? Each pyruvate got split into an acetyl coenzyme A. So this Krebs cycle actually happens twice for each individual molecule of glucose. So far, glucose is turning out to be an, a pretty impressive molecule, and it's giving me a lot of goodies. We're on to the final stage, which is the ticket counter, and looks even more crazy than this, but that's just because we're going to have some cool uh, diagrams of the cell membrane, the, uh, sorry, the plasma membrane found in the mitochondria and stuff like that. Sorry for all the weird analogies, but... If you enjoy the circus as much as I do, then you'll have no problem understanding how all of this works. Now all we got to do is take our tickets in hand and head on over to the ticket exchange counter called the electron transport chain to get all the goodies we want.